Hi guys. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about what nobody else is talking about, and that's how your eyes work. Like really, really describing how you're fooled into seeking an external illusion versus uh, an internal one. So this is going to be quick, but it's really fun. Um, it'll help you understand your behavior, right, and how it runs on autopilot and how it's working. So. For those of you that don't know, your eyes work like a mirror. You've been told that the universe is a mirror. You've been told that it is a mirror. You've been told this over and over again, right? So if you were to look into a mirror, you will notice that you look straight ahead, but you see what's behind you, okay? It's reflected behind you. So what your eyes are doing is making you believe that what you want is outside of you instead of what's inside of you. So while you're worrying about what's going on externally, okay, like your, your, your focus is out there, not in here, okay? While you're doing that, what you're doing is giving the external illusion its life. So you're keeping everything animated because your focus is out there, not knowing that you're the source of it and it's inside what you're seeking. So as a result, these people appear to have a life of their own, a mind of their own. They run on autopilot. They do all of this stuff. But you feel as if you're a helpless victim because here you are chasing the external when you are the source of it. Your eyes give you the clue if you look in a mirror. That's why mirrors are magical. If you look in a mirror, you'll understand how your eyes are working. So that being said, here's the rest of it, okay? You are falling for your own radiance. And we um, hear this story um, in the Hindu principles, the princess of Kashi, right? Um, where you're told that there was a young man whom um, back in the day, because they didn't have a little girl to pose as the princess of Kashi in a play, put on a little girl costume and set out to play the part of the princess. Well, many, many years later, I'm giving you the condensed version of the story. Many, many years later, um, he finds the picture in storage has no idea it's him and falls in love with the girl because he knows that this young lady has to be about his age based on everything he's looking at. He is absolutely positively smitten with his own image as a counterpart female energy. So he has fallen in love with this. And someone has to point out, hey baby, that's your own image. Okay, that's what you're, you're after. And unfortunately, she doesn't exist. So she's, he loses all of his desire for her because he realizes that's me. Okay, now, why is this so important? I'll tell you. Because if you're not holding on to your desires and you <sighs> expel them like the source that you are, the universe brings them to you. It's much easier. It's much easier, you guys. <laughs> okay? But if you are holding on to your stuff and you're dealing with out there without realizing you're the source image, you are going to expend a lot of energy on our hamster wheel leading nowhere. Can you eventually change it? Sure. But understand that the more you want what is out there without realizing you are the source of it, the harder you are going to work. Your eyes give you a clue. It's your own radiance that you're after. Think about it. The reason that you're attracted to someone is because how you feel when you are around them. Right? It's some kind of magic sauce? No, it's not. It's your own radiance. You are after the feeling. Okay? So, if you're after the feeling, does it make sense, especially if you've already had something and you're trying to get it back, does it make sense 
to long for, to pine for, to do the opposite of what got you that thing in the first place. To act as if you don't have it, to pine for it, to long for it. Or does it make more sense to maintain the emotion that got you what you wanted in the first place so that it can come to you because you're no longer desiring it. You're knowing that if I keep my focus in here, out there will do my bidding. It's the difference between Moses, the slave, and Moses, the freaking royal who has slaves. Like, and I don't mean to say that the world is your slave, but it is. It's your servant. You have dominion over it. This is God's will. Okay? So your eyes are the reflective surface that make the things appear outside of you that are actually within you, made in the back of your skull. And what you need to focus on is the understanding of this. Okay? Um, Joan, um, if you look at my self, sorry to interrupt my, my thing, I'm answering this question. If you look at all my videos over and over again, I explain how to get an X back. I go into 14, 14 videos at least, and that's not counting the ones that are in the series, on how to love yourself. Watch them over and over again. But in terms of how to get your ex back, you guys, I've already done that. I've already done that. You have to do the work. I'm not doing it for you, okay? I'm not going to be your little magic pill. I do not want you to depend on me to learn how to fish. No, I'm teaching you how to fish. So you must apply what I have, the content I have given in order to receive it, okay? And all I can do is show you what is possible. And I can offer you guys guidance and you're more than welcome. But I have already gone over and over and over again how to get your ex back. And if you applied it, you have your ex back. It's that simple. You have to understand, it's not about them. And this is what I'm talking about right now. It's funny that you asked the one question I'm sitting here trying to address so you guys can get it back sooner. Okay? It's not about them. It's about you. You are seeking your own radiance. You are the source image. Because of you, everything outside happens. Because of you. So even as you think you are chasing out there, they're only alive behaving the way that they're behaving because of your concept of how you think this is what's been solidified. And so the problem is most of you have been afraid to face that. You're afraid to look at what is. Your fear is keeping you from living. So your ego is able to use this to self-sabotage you to throw up your weaknesses in your face. This is why I say, look at your wounds. You don't have to stay wounded. You just got to look at them long enough to understand what the fuck is going on on autopilot so you can fix it. If you don't know what you're fixing, it's going to remain outside and you're going to struggle for no reason. I'm trying to prevent this. I almost found sound desperate because it's compassion. So you don't repeat the same mistakes I did when I didn't know what I didn't know. Now that I know, I want to help everybody understand. Look, here's the shortcut, you guys. But what I can't do is force you to take the shortcut. If you want to learn the hard way, be my guest, babe. Be my guest. That's how I learn. <laughs> I ain't going to stop you. That's how I learn. All right? Okay. So, again, you are seeking outside because you haven't realized you're the source image. If you can look at whatever it is you're afraid to look at from a place of peace, from a place of understanding, then you can understand what's behind it. Many of you ask all the time, and this is the reason for your suffering, you are asking, why is this happening, son? Why me? What does this mean? What does that mean? When you guys do that, you are forgetting 
the number one Neville Goddard rule out there. And that is, you are first cause. As first cause, we do not ask why and how things happen. When you take the time to know yourself, warts and all, you'll understand why things happen. So as an example, okay, if I have a rejection wound, my attraction to the people rejecting me makes sense all of a sudden. Now I can't even get mad at the people rejecting me because I have to accept, oh shit, you had to reject me so I could wake up to the fact that I had a rejection wound. <laughs> okay. Now you're not upset. Now you understand why. And that's what I'm trying to get you to get to. Get to. Stop asking why of causation. This is causing your suffering. Instead, be like God and know. Take an honest look at yourself and understand what is playing out. When you have a higher level of understanding of why things are occurring, you don't have points of contention. You know what to deal with, okay? So, how to heal wounds, okay? First and foremost, you want to address and acknowledge the human side of you, okay? This is what I'm going to say on this topic. Please do not ignore the fact that you went through the experience. Everyone says, ignore 3D, ignore 3D, la 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 la, ignore 3D. Don't do that. Don't do that. What you ignore repeats over and over again in other faces and will seep into your job and your other relationships and your relationships with your children. Don't do that. Don't do that. You see, what is happening is happening for you. What is going on externally is showing you what needs to be addressed and fixed. And the fact that you have disassociated from it is the reason you are victim to it. That's it. It's the reason you've become victim. And the way to become victor is to understand how it played. Okay? So first and foremost, it's being able to look at the human side and acknowledging the fact that you went through whatever you went through. I don't want you not to look at it, to ignore it, to, to feel, you know, feel guilty or angry or, or take on the guilt of responsibility. Well, it's my fault. If it's not their fault, it's my fault. Please avoid this ego game. I just want you to look at it and acknowledge where you're at now. Acknowledge the human side. Please don't disregard this because... It's, it's almost demoralizing to not acknowledge where you're at right now, okay? To say, ignore 3D, blah, 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 blah. Don't, please don't, okay? Acknowledge the wound. Acknowledge the human side. Next, and this is on the radical forgiveness sheet, you guys, that was posted by a, a member. Please download this worksheet, and if you have things you need to forgive, Work it out. There's only five questions. And be honest. And wherever you are, just answer it. You will find that the more you apply this radical forgiveness, the more you will set yourself free. Because if you are the source of the problem, you're also the source of the solution. And while you're focused on being a problem, you're not going to get anywhere closer to the solution. But if you're willing to acknowledge, oh, I'm the obstacle, let me get out of my own way and see what's going on, you're willing to change it, you'll fix it. Okay? All right. So acknowledge where you're at. Next, understand why it happened to you. This is the higher road. Okay? You're going to have to come up with some kind of phrase Okay, that is universally true, but that um, you can use to help you transition from from your tendency. And I say your, but it's it's everybody's tendency to want to blame yourself or blame others. Okay, a phrase like 
this needed to happen so I can see what I was doing to myself. The fact that I want to blame another is because I've disassociated from it. This is serving me. This is how I fix what I came to fix. This is the reason. This is my only obstacle. If I can figure this out, this doesn't have to keep repeating in my life over and over again. If I don't, it will continue to do so and it will continue to trigger me and my ego will have the ammunition. What you're trying to do is disarm the ego's ability to get under your skin, okay? So that high level understanding will allow you to apply the forgiveness. Follow the rest of the steps of that worksheet. I can't stress it enough, but find ways to start applying this high level understanding because when you apply radical forgiveness, you will discover that it's not about bygones being bygones. It's not about ignoring 3D. It's about realizing how something served you so that you realize that nothing went wrong because the human side of you wants to go into blame mode. The human side of you wants to say, hey, I got raped, fuck you, that happened. Okay, like I'm giving you a, like an extreme example of something where it would be almost unconscionable to ignore that someone got raped. Okay, but why did someone get raped? That's what you guys go to next, right? Well, I'll tell you, you have an injustice wound, and so the injustice wound has to play out in any way, shape, or possible. So must the humiliation wound. So for example, one of my client's biggest breakthroughs is she struggled her whole life to understand why, 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 why? And suddenly, she looked out and was like, oh my God, sin. My whole life, everything was my humiliation wound. Everything that they did was my humiliation. So now you can forgive the people, okay? I want you to think of God and your 3D reality kind of like a movie that you're making. And you're starring in it, you're directing it, you're hiring all the actors, okay? Now, when you're in your experience, because you also are one of the actors, that's kind of how this, if we're going to use that analogy works, you're also one of the actors. Does it make sense if you're going to play Batman to get mad at the Joker, or can you understand that the Joker was necessary so Batman can be Batman? You following my analogy here? This is how you need to treat your reality with absolute ownership, with absolute honesty. And not conditional, well, I wish you weren't like that sort of attitude of, oh, okay, this is what I came to fix. If I fix this now, it will not repeat in my reality. But the reason that you guys are chasing something externally, like I said, is because you haven't figured out how your eyes work like mirrors. And I, I promise you, if you guys all go look in the mirror, you will see. You think you're looking in front of you, but what is being shown is behind you, right? You can use this analogy in a car. I look in front of me, and my rearview mirror shows me behind me. It always works this way, okay? All right. So take this into consideration, you guys, and understand Apply radical forgiveness to everything because you are not setting anyone else free but yourself. You want to stop these patterns. You want to be able to take an honest look at them. I know that the bypass route and everybody that does manifestation wants to tell you, oh, don't look at your shit. Just say that you're healed and you're healed. No, baby. See, the way that you get into the enlightenment part of your head where you realize you're the constant and everything comes to you and you ain't looking for anything and everyone just shows up and life is easy and you're not suffering and when you and when shit happens you understand why it happens the way you get here at the ceiling of your head like the attic where the enlightenment is is through your experience this is where your wisdom comes from and if you think i'm making that up this is biblical. So you will notice, you guys, I will always stick to the Bible because my relationship with God is bar none impenetrable. Okay? And what I'm talking about is fear being the beginning of your wisdom. Fear. Because 
what you learned while you were fearful and you saw that the law works both forward and reverse is the beginning of your wisdom. Now you know what not to do. Now you don't blame yourself for that. You consider that wisdom. And rather than detracting from your experience, you consider that your wisdom. Now this helps you in your life going forward not to repeat the same mistakes. So it is the beginning of your wisdom. It is not what we typically do. And I'm calling myself out here, you guys. I, uh, see, that's the thing. I'm going to be naked in front of y'all, right? Okay. I'm calling myself out. The tendency is to regret your source of wisdom, to take value away from those experiences, to self-reject because you didn't like what the what happened or you felt you made a mistake or whatever the case may be if you've done that you feel that you that that this isn't valuable experience okay so now what you're doing inside of you is rejecting yourself you don't forgive rejecting yourself okay now you've done this to yourself and you haven't realized it when you do this type of behavior, okay? So now you've disassociated from this because you haven't realized what you're doing. So what must happen by law, because you are the source image, outside of you, you will be rejected. Outside of you, everything you've done to yourself will occur. And now you are a victim of your own story because you didn't understand what you did to yourself. This is why I say, please don't bypass. Please take an honest look at yourself and you can love yourself a whole lot because I sure did, but I also didn't want to look at the stuff that was causing me the most pain. Okay. And so I did, um, other ways of coping. My coping was, oh, let me go out and fix the world. I can fix the world. I can fix the world because I was trying to atone for what was going on within myself. It's, it's, uh, it's just another mask. It's another ego coping mechanism, okay? So think about these things and understand that the way that you use the universal mirror is to take an honest look at it, not from your human standpoint, but from the source perspective. Because from the source perspective, you understand. You understand the higher evolution. If you can detach from it long enough, and by detach, I don't mean disassociate completely from reality. You're here to experience reality, okay? By detach, I mean this. A fish doesn't know that it is in water until you pull it out of water. You don't know you're stuck in your story until you pull yourself out of your story. That is the reason for the fasting, for the meditation, for the stealing of your mind. These are all recommended for this reason so that you can pull yourself out of your story long enough to look at it. And when you can look at it, your higher level perspective will be like, oh, wow, um, he cheated on me because I have an unresolved uh, wound about maybe my parents uh, somehow exposing me to cheating. Or I have an unresolved wound from the very first husband or boyfriend that ever cheated on me and I never addressed it. And so now it's repeating because I clearly didn't learn what I was supposed to. If you can look at it like that, you're not looking at people being guilty. Nothing changes. You're facing it, but at least you're taking ownership for your part in the suffering. You're understanding why it happened. And like I said, you only suffer because you guys are asking, why is this happening? Why? I don't understand why. Or you're going, but this happened to me. Okay? And it's important not to, not to do that. To, to take ownership because once you have ownership, you can change a situation. You guys like me because I help you get out of the 3D boxes you have stuck yourselves in, okay? Well, the only reason I'm really good at getting out of 3D boxes is because <laughs> I spent a lot of time being stuck. <laughs> so, so now I offer the shortcuts, okay? And not as a judgment, okay? If... When I share these shortcuts, you feel as if I'm judging you or condemning you. That is an indication that your wound is still active because I don't need to do what I do. I simply do this out of love because I realize that everything is me. It literally is 
me, my spirit, my universal experience on display. Now, in your reality, it's the exact same thing. It's true of everyone. I'm not special in that sense. I just know it. Like I've been shown, I know it, I know it, I know it. It's my experience. When you guys ask me questions, you always find out. Whoever sets up an appointment with me realizes how we're connected, which part of our experience it's, it's playing out, and we can relate to each other only because you're talking about the experience that I know, that I, know, that I am having. You know, everything serves me, including helping you guys, because there are times where maybe I'm stuck and then you guys come and do me the extreme fit. No, look, you guys come to me. I don't come to you, okay? But you guys come to me with your current problem, okay? And it happens to be the exact same thing I'm dealing with. So then I give you the advice I need to hear, and then I have more clarity over myself. Do you see how all of it served me? This is how it's set up. It's true of everyone. I'm not special. I just happen to see it easier than others because I work really damn hard in owning who I am. And that's what we have to do. Okay. Now think about this. If what you are seeking is within you, does it make sense to obsess over them out there? Does it? It's harder, right? It keeps you on a hamster wheel. It keeps you going, doesn't it? Woohoo! <laughs> but if it's about working smarter, not harder, then understand it's your own radiance you're after. Okay? If you understand this, as soon as you stop desiring something because you know that it's you, and you're the source of it, you turn on a force the likes that other people respond to. They come to you. You're not looking for anyone. You're not doing anything. You just show up and life shows up for you. It's crazy, but that's where I'm at right now. And if that's true of everyone, and it's a shortcut and life can be easier, then damn Skippy, I'm going to share it with you all. Because the fact of the matter is, God's will is not for you all to suffer. God's will is for you to be happy and enjoy your life and have the experience for the sake of experience. Creation is already finished. There is nothing else. You are the eternal technology and you're seeking out there when the truth is you are its creator. You are the maker of time and space illusions. In fact, if someone appears separate from you, it's your conception of your head that they're separate from you. And then your eyes will show you what you made in here out there. What you made in here out there. And then you get on the hamster wheel and you entertain yourself. Do you see how pointless that is? Unless you understand its purpose, you understand how you made it, and you can enjoy your life. Very different way of living the way God intended for you to live. But you have to figure out you're the one that you're seeking. You have to figure out you're the source image. You have to see how your eyes are showing you what's out there, but you're actually making it in here. You have to be able to look out there Okay, long enough to see what's going on in here, and then that will help you if you ever get lost along the way. Okay, but it is not your job to fix them. Whoever you need to fix will come to you. You learn that in the Gospel of Thomas. And go about the countryside, you heal the sick among you by seeing the best, and whoever offers you a plate, you eat there. And paraphrasing. That means if someone asks for help, give it. If they didn't, just see the best and keep going. Because honestly, I no longer need anything. Whatever I need just shows up. And I don't, I don't need excess stuff because whatever it is, I just, whatever. It'll come to me. It just shows up. But... In order for me to develop that kind of faith, I had to really develop a relationship with God, develop a relationship with my own spirit. I had to take the way of the warrior, 
the way of the warrior in, in Buddhist terms is someone who's willing to look at themselves. Not, not in war, but willing to look at themselves, the source of their own fear. And if you're willing to do that unapologetically, you'll understand why everything is. So that when people say, well, if God's ways are beyond knowing, well, they're actually not. Your spirit guides you along the way. You need what you need when you, you have it in the moment. But you have to have that really strong connection with spirit to, to, to see that it's not beyond knowing at all. In fact, everything in the universe makes sense when you understand this. You don't sit here and worry. But you got to be willing to look at yourself, honestly. And by self, I mean everything external, and it will point you inward. And then inward, anything that you've disassociated from is pointing you inward. And it's, it's pretty cool once you're able to break down these components, so to speak. All right? So you guys... Think about what I'm saying. Understand why things come to you, not the other way around. If you can own this, you'll understand the difference. And, and I, I can't, I can't stress this enough. You're after yourself, yourself. When you understand that, and you start living for you, you start living for your joy. You start. Okay, you don't want to lose weight for them. You want to lose weight for yourself. You um, put on makeup for yourself. You, you, uh, if that's what you want, right? It, you, you wear the outfit for yourself, not for them. You go lift the weights for yourself, not for them. You start living for you. When you start doing that, others show up to show you your own progress. Cause I had this conversation earlier with a client. She was like, oh my God, Sin, it's true. 3D shows up as you are. And, and I'll share this last, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say. I had an excellent conversation with someone yesterday and I hadn't talked to her in a while. And she said, Sin, I did all the work on myself and you're absolutely right. I see what you're talking about. 3D checks you, you don't check 3D. 3D shows up to prove that your self-concept is on point. She said that. And that felt good. That felt good because it's true. It's true always. And that's the thing. It's true always. It's true always. It's true always. Don't disassociate from it. Be willing to look at it. But look at it not from the eyes of a human. Not with the standpoint of um, I'm going to blame them or blame myself. No with the higher level perspective, with the perspective that says, this is playing for me, for me to see inside of myself so I can see what I need to improve on because that's the exact reason why I decided to be born and why I decided to be here. And I don't care who thinks that they weren't, that they didn't have a choice. No, baby, you chose. You are here. Don't waste this. Don't waste the opportunity to get to know your soul. Don't waste the opportunity to fall in love with yourself. Don't waste the opportunity to see what life has to offer when you stop chasing out there and you start figuring out in here. Don't miss that. Because if you're looking for that love connection, you gotta love you first. Then as the source image, Others will appear this way. If you're looking for that money, then become money. Become that vibe. If you're looking for any type of success, get real clear on your success and get thankful for that and start getting coherent and then allow your actions to align with that. But take the initiative to look deeply into yourself. Accept that, once you have accepted that, everyone else will do what you have done. Automatically, it checks you. It checks you. And this is a shortcut. Perhaps people aren't talking about it as much because they're encouraging you to do all these techniques to get what's out there. Do all these techniques to get what's out there. And you can. That's the 3D way. A little antiquated and we've kind of outgrown that already we're beyond that okay
work on you. You are the reason for everything in your life. If you're willing to own that, you can have everything. I swear. Promise. Okay? And if you're wondering where and why and how I know this, it's real simple. Seek the kingdom of God first. Seek the kingdom of you first. You're the source. And everything is added on to you. So as you can see, everything I said was biblical. Everything I said was biblical. Okay? All right, you guys. I love you so much. I feel funny with all this makeup on, you guys. <laughs> I put it on for the sake of <laughs> this video. I feel funny with it on. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm done. Um, I hope what I said sits in. I hope you take an honest look at yourself. I hope that you don't desire to bypass. I hope you understand that you are what you seek and you can understand how your eyes work and how you've gotten on the hamster wheel and how to get off the hamster wheel. And I hope more than anything that you understand this. When you move, the shadow follows. So stop worrying about whether or not they're going to follow. Stop worrying about any of that. It's how it is. You're the source image. And if you want to get away from what has been solidified, you're going to have to work on in here because what has been solidified can change on a dime if you do. All right, you guys. I hope that helps. <laughs>